Yo, yo, welcome back to this, the fifth video in your five video series on how to get started with the five day fasting challenge. I'm your host, Joe Elliott, here with the last video. And what I'm gonna talk about today in this video is the use of supplements. Now, like I mentioned, there are mandatory supplements, bang, and there are optional supplements. So there are the ones that I suggest you use and don't skip out on, otherwise you're gonna suffer and they're the ones that might optimize and support your journey, especially if you're going to be lifting during this five-day challenge. So we'll get, that, get down to that in a moment. Now, the very first thing I wanna begin with is water, right? Because we are water fasting, that means you will be consuming water, you will be drinking water, but you don't wanna drink just any water. You wanna drink with what my friend Cole Robinson calls snake juice. Snake juice is basically water with salts. Now I've been putting salt in my water for over two decades now just because I like the way it tastes and how it satisfies my, my thirst, quenches my thirst, right? Better than Gatorade with all that sugar and dye and shit. Uh, but Cole has gotten real specific about exactly how many milligrams and uh, what types of salts to put in your water, which I think is really cool. And I'll put a link down below to one of his videos where he tells you all about the snake juice. But what I'm going to do right now is tell you how I use the snake juice and how I recommend you use the snake juice while you're going through your fast. Now, um, before I get into the snake juice recipe, or at least my version of it, for, I'm just going to show you what I do. Um, one of the misconceptions... One of my strongly long held beliefs about water was that we needed to be drinking lots and lots and lots of it all the time. And I remember there was a point where I was drinking like six liters of water a day. I was just guzzling this shit. And if I didn't have it, I would start feeling bad. My, you know, I would become very sensitive to not having six liters of freaking water every day. And uh, when I began fasting, I began wanting less water. And then I began uh, learning that we don't need nearly as much water as we thought we needed, or at least I was taught that I needed, and now I don't drink nearly as much water. And when I do drink water, it's strategic. And so what I mean by that is, well, number one, uh, especially while I'm fasting, I keep my water limited to just two of these. This is a liter and a half, right? You can probably, you probably notice this is about the size of a large, Evian or a large bottle, they're about a liter and a half. So two of these makes three liters of water. So I basically cut my water in half and, uh, and I didn't dehydrate, dry up and die and turn to dust. In fact, I feel great, I feel a lot better. Uh, drinking just two of these a day. Now, uh, I drink two of these a day no matter what, but while I'm fasting, particularly when I'm prolonged fasting, and that means, you know, not just OMAD, this means nomad plus UMAD. UMAD means multiple nomads. Like, you mad? Yeah, you mad. You mad you fasting that many days? You mad. That's you mad. Um, that is when the snake juice becomes mandatory. You know, if you're doing OMAD or if you skip a meal, which, you know, a lot of times that's what's how people get started, you know, with the 16-8 or the 18-6. Uh, it's not as important because you're probably getting a lot of the salts in the food that you're eating. But if you're going 2, 3, 4, 10, 40 days without food, you're going to want to make sure that your water is potent with potassium and sea salt. So here's what I do. For each one, li one and a half liter bottle of water like this, and, uh, and sometimes I'll do like one in the morning and then one in the evening, and then dry fast throughout the day. You don't have to do that. I use uh, a form of Celtic sea salt. I'll either use Celtic sea salt, which I've been using for years, or I'll do like a pink Himalayan sea salt. And, uh, and with regard to the salt, I'll just put uh, a quarter of a teaspoon. A quarter of a teaspoon in here. All right, so I got a little measure. Quarter teaspoon in one, quarter teaspoon in the other. Boom, I'm done with my salt. Potassium, which by the way, uh, I, when I first started fasting and I was only using salt, I was getting cramps, right? and you know I figured that was just a part of this part of the deal. I didn't realize that uh, that having not having enough potassium would cause cramps. I was doing uh, kickboxing, uh, Muay Thai, and shit, 
and uh, I was getting super cramps. And then, you know, I found out about the potassium and the magnesium and what it does for the body. And so what I also do is I put half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, if you're following along with me, half a teaspoon of potassium chloride. Um, I also like the way it tastes. I fucking love the way the potassium tastes. I don't know why, something weird about me. I like the way the salt tastes. I like the way the potassium tastes. Uh, it almost makes my water taste like sweat. And for some reason, uh, I'm highly satiated by that sweaty, tasty, that sweaty taste in my water. So I got a little bit of that in there. And then finally, uh, this is, you know, the first two, it depends on who you ask, you know, you might watch Cole's video and he'll, he'll say something different. Um, it's just been my experience and, my, and it's just my idea that the first two are mandatory. First, you need that sodium, you need that potassium. If you remember in like biology class, the sodium potassium pump. Anybody remember what the sodium potassium pump is? Right? It's uh, it, it helps your brain work. You know, it's part of the nervous system that helps like the synapse. So you, you know, your brain, the brain cells, the neurons, neuro, they have neurotransmitters in between them. Right? Like they're not actually touching. They got neurotransmitters, and they got like you need like uh, minerals, and you need support so that that so that those neurotransmitters can jump the synapse. So basically it makes your nervous system or your electrical system that much quicker when you use these things. When you slow down or you stop using these things, the brain slows down, you're not as quick. Um, and then of course the cramping comes in. Uh, let, me f let me finish up with you on the three that I find uh, necessary, the, the first two super necessary. Fourth one, Epsom salt. This is food grade Epsom salt. And with the Epsom salt, uh, which is magnesium, I'll do also do a quarter teaspoon. So, you know, these two salts, Epsom salt, sea salt, quarter teaspoon, potassium, half a teaspoon. And one of these, you do that twice, you're good. You can also put baking soda, which Cole recommends. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It tastes like shit. In fact, first time, and I'm going to talk about this in another video because this is really super helpful for you. But the first time I made this stuff and I put maybe too much baking soda, uh, I discovered what a, what a salt flush is. If you don't know what a salt flush is, just stick around. But um, yeah, I drank it. I drank it all up. And I was, it's like somebody stuck a hose in my mouth and I was <laughs> through the butt. Uh, that's what a salt flush does flushes out your digestive system and uh, makes you makes you spray poop. Not even diarrhea, which is soft. Spray poop. <laughs> out of your ass. So, um, but that has its own benefit. I, lo I looked into it and I was like, well, this is great. So I'll use the uh, baking soda sometimes if I want to do salt flushes. So that's, that's it with regard to your mandatory or highly recommended Supplements, you got sodium, potassium, magnesium. Check out snake juice recipe down below. That's gonna be very helpful to you. Now let's move on to the, I'm gonna say non-essential because I didn't start fasting with this fasting fuel that I'm gonna tell you about in a moment. I didn't start fasting with it, but when I got into the fasting, I was approached by my friend, uh, Casey Krejci, who you might remember from some of my old YouTube videos when I used to talk about Living Fuel. And Living Fuel is a green supplement that I've been using going on three decades. I'm using it forever, since before my first daughter was born. I don't say three decades, two decades. My daughter's 15, I started using it about a year or so. She's 14, I started using it about 15 years ago. So it's a great supplement, I love the supplement. Uh, when I started fasting many years ago, Casey showed me how to formulate what he called a micro fuel for a micro fast where basically you're taking in micronutrients while you're fasting. I did this, like I said, many years ago. In fact, I have another YouTube video, if I remember, I'll put a link down below from like 2014 where I, where I went through and showed you uh, basically what I'm gonna show you today anyway, with regard to micro fasting. So uh, let me tell you a little bit more about why you might wanna micro fast. So first of all, when you're fasting, you don't need any nutrients. You don't need nutrients at all, for nothing. Well, maybe for something, but you don't need to ingest them. You don't need them because you're burning up all the nutrients in the body fat. 
that you've been holding on to for decades. So I was talking to a friend the other day and she was like, uh, you know, where do I get the food? What do I do when I don't eat? And I, and, and, and I, I didn't grab her, but I showed her on me. And I was like, look at it, look at, look, check all that out. You see all that that's hanging around your waistline and, and flipping and flopping underneath your fucking arm? You know what that is? Food. Food you ain't eat yet. Food that you put in your mouth and your body was like, whoa, huh? Way too much going on here right now anyway, and we gotta store this shit somewhere, so there it goes in your fucking armpit, around your ass, and around your belly button if you're a dude. So you got plenty of food. Got plenty of food hanging out waiting there. Here is an analogy uh, used by Dr. Fung. I'll get into this in a, for a moment, but uh, I really like this analogy. Uh, Dr. Jason Fung, who is a fasting expert. I recommend one of his books, The uh, Complete Guide to Fasting. It was a few days ago. I suggest you get it. So he likens the liver, right, which is an energy storage organ within the body in a way, and, uh, and, and the... Uh, the liver, the muscle, and the body fat. Anyway, I'm probably getting this all wrong. But when we eat food and we don't use it, the body puts it away in the deep freezer. Take that food and put it away in the deep freezer. Think about the deep freezer. Deep freezer is where you have excess food, but it's not as easy to get to as the refrigerator. So when you eat food and your body's you know, gonna use it right away or use it soon, it stores it in the muscle, as glycogen, in the liver, it's glycogen, you know, a lot of basically we're talking about sugar energy, and uh, and when you're ready to use it, your body will take it out of the liver, it will take it out of the muscle, it will use it up. But then when you're when you're all out of it completely, oh, the refrigerator's bare, right? The muscle and the liver is bare. The refrigerator's bare. There's nothing in the refrigerator. You open it up, and you just see that little box of baking soda. You got to go to the deep freezer. And that's what your body fat is. So your body then says, okay, well, there's nothing here. I haven't eaten in days. Let's go to the deep freezer and get out some of that old meatloaf. And so uh, that's when it starts tapping into your body fat. Your body fat's like that deep freezer. Right? And so all that food that's in there is what's going to nourish you while you're fasting. As long as you get the water, as long as you get the salts, don't worry about the macronutrients, micronutrients, and things of that nature. You know, we're, we're, the whole point, a big part of the point of doing this is to tap into that deep freezer and get rid of some of that. You, you know, every once in a while with the deep freezer, what do you got to do? You got to defrost it. You got to open it up and let all the, all the frost out. Well, that's what we're doing. We're getting all the junk food and all the shit that you hadn't digested yet and the overfrosting in your fat and we're burning it up. But... When I began prolonged fasting again this year, I was reapproached by my friend Casey because uh, he's smart. He knows what he's talking about, knows what he's doing, and he cares about me. And he says, Elliot, I got to tell you, you're missing out on something here. You might want to try the micro fasting once again during your next fast. So uh, after my 10 day fast, where it was nothing, just water, snake juice, a um, few days, a few weeks later, right, right up until my birthday actually, and it helped me drop, what I'm about to tell you, helped me drop the last few pounds. Uh, and also help my workouts, and that's, you know, I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, I microfasted. I microfasted for five days. Now, uh, a little bit more about why you might want to microfast before I tell you how to microfast. What do you think about that, right? That way you can listen, decide if you want to listen or not. So, uh, what I've found, what I've read, what has been shared with me is this is that the best time to take in some amino acids and micronutrients, meaning that they are not macronutrients because they don't have calories. They're the broke down versions of proteins and fats. To take it during your workout will help fuel your workout while you're fasting. So it's almost like you're giving yourself a boost of energy and your body's gonna use up those amino acids and it's gonna use up some of the fatty acids and it's gonna help kind of satiate and support you uh, and also some of the greens, some of the stuff I'll talk about. Satiate, support you in your workout and a little bit in your recovery. Uh, once again, it's a bonus, it's optional. Um, and then there are those who have critiques against it. You know, valid, very valid critiques and I understand. Um, that amino acids can also boost insulin. This is, this is, this has been shown. This has been shown. This may be true. This may be a reason why you want to stay away from it. Uh, and then also, uh, that 
I think it's leucine, which is one of the amino acids, also stimulates mTOR. And, you know, mTOR I likened onto like protein's version of insulin. Yeah, you know, sugar does the insulin. I know I'm wrong here, but I'm just, the way I, it helps me think about it. Um, so it is a building stimulant. It helps you, it helps build. You know, you want leucine, you want it. You want to build up your fucking muscle. But when you're fasting, you're wanting to literally, you know, you're forcing yourself into a catabolic state. So you don't want to take in too much building stuff. And there is some evidence, some research, some studies, some people that say that by stimulating mTOR too much, you get cancer, you know, because if you think about cancer, it's a building. Cancer isn't, is a building uh, problem. Your, your cells are going out of, going crazy, building. And that, you know, uh, we want to stop that process by eliminating things that stimulate mTOR, that building process. And it's good for people with cancer, but it's good for everyone who's cleansing. So, you know, there's, again, that's why it's optional. There's a lot of different things. There are a lot of different ideas. I'm sure I'm a lot of different comments. Not saying you're right. He's wrong, anybody like that, but if you want to try it out, because uh, I will be, uh, go give it a go. Now, because I'm going to be strongman training beginning tomorrow, and I'm fasting beginning tomorrow, and I've made the commitment to do both, I do have to compromise a little bit, and I will be using some micro shakes, some micro fasting. So uh, let me tell you a little bit more about what that is and how you can set it up and make it and do it if you want to with me, if you want. So the very first thing is, I got my little bag here, I got my little bag here, I got my little London Real bag here. Anybody ever see me on London Real? I've been on London Real twice. And so the first thing is I use a scoop, so I'll, you know, I'll get a little shaker bottle, you know, half size shaker bottle. I'll put two scoops of Living Fuel Aminos. I'll put links down below if you're interested in, in uh, using Living Fuel Aminos. I love Living Fuel products. Uh, then also, Take about five to ten of these uh, omega threes, and uh, and again, you know, there are calories here, so I'm not legitimately fasting if I take this. Uh, you are fasting; you're going to get tremendous fasting results, um, but it's still there are calories there, so it's not a legitimate uh, fast while you're taking this. But it's up to you. And also, because they're fatty acids, they don't stimulate insulin, so you could stay deep in ketosis taking this. Most of you watching this don't need to do the micro fasting. I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing. So don't, don't get freaked out like you need to get this stuff. In fact, I would suggest that you go through this first five days without it. Uh, I also will add MCT. I'll do like two scoops of this. And then here's something pretty cool I want to share with you if you're into, into greens and stuff. So, uh, when I first did the micro fasting many years ago, Casey had me do, put a little bit of living fuel in it. Living fuel has all kinds of like magical greens, herbs, shit like that. And um, it also had a lot of vegetables. And in fact, I was starting to get a little like gut irritated from the vegetables, I think, in, in, the, in the living fuel. But he created something where He's got the green supplement but without the vegetables, just the herbs, the adaptogens and things like that. But, um, but he calls it pet fuel because he was giving it to his dog. <laughs> so if you want, <laughs> you can put some pet fuel, uh, which is honestly, I mean, I've been using it. It's fine. It's just greens. It's just greens. It's just green supplement. You know, put two little scoops of that and, uh, and we're good. Mm, I don't even like the way it smells. I like the way to, maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a dog on the inside. And so I like that, but this time around, starting tomorrow, when I micro fast, um, I'm gonna be using man greens. You see that man greens? Can you see it? it's like shiny? Man greens. And this is the first time I'm actually opening it, so I'm not giving you a review. I'm not telling you that you gotta use it. But it was sent to me by a friend, Chad House. You guys might know him. Uh, and I want to try it instead of the pet fuel because. It's man greens, motherfucker. It's for men. Um, and so it's clin he says it's clinically effective formula for men. Natural. Fl and then uh, Pet Fuel has a ton of stuff in it, more than this. But his argument here is that you want to concentrate on the things that 
are effectively formulated for men to help men increase energy and libido, boost testosterone, while lowering cholesterol, and does not contain estrogenic ingredients that dominate most green supplements. And so he's got maca root, beetroot, morganga powder, spinach, ashkawanga, turmeric, horny goat weed, some other shit. So uh, once again, for me, it's an experiment. I'm gonna be using it. I'll let you know how I like it. If you watch my live streams, you'll find out. Uh, and then also I'll put a link down below if you wanna try it also too. You wanna try that man's greens. Man greens, not sissy greens. Not lady greens, fucking man greens. So that's it, y'all. Uh, what you ought to know before you go is that I'll be back with another video. Of course, this five video series is done. This is the fifth of the five videos that I promised to give you. But I also promised you a free ebook. So I'm going to take all of the things that you've learned in this video series. I'm going to condense it down, develop it out. It'll be an ebook available for you tomorrow. Uh, anybody who decides to opt in and get the free ebook, you ought to know that this is one of those um, ongoing things. So I'll be redeveloping it as we go along and I'll always send you a, uh, a new version of it. You'll have this video series. You'll have me by your side while you start the fasting journey tomorrow. Start, it's actually starting tonight. I know I'm uploading this on Sunday. Starting tonight. Starting now. Get ready. And so we'll be fasting uh, through tomorrow. We're going to do a nomad. I'll be lifting tomorrow also. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll go live stream or I'll just video and cut up. I haven't decided yet. Uh, then we break fast. We'll break fast together. On Tuesday, you guys know the deal. Nomad, nomad. And then finally nomad on Friday. And uh, that's it. I'm excited to do this with you guys. It's, it's something I need also. I was going to do it anyway. But I'm getting so much, so many questions and feedback from you guys that decided, why don't we just do it together? And, uh, and so it's going to be great for, great for everyone involved. Great for the world. We're breaking out of the conditioning. We're breaking the matrix. And it begins with breaking the addiction to consumption, overeating food. Done. <laughs>